I know, I look like a cockroach, but I'm liking these front bangs. Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Steffi, and today we are back with another dun -dun -dun mukbang. Woo! Today we are filming in the Biss Market, which by the way, Daddy Biss said that we could each pick something out for free. He would pay for it. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> and we get to go to the market and pick out our little treat. So I'm really excited about that. But today we have Taki versus Hot Cheetos, cheesy corn dogs, fried chicken, and um, some noodles. So I'm actually gonna pour in the hot water from the Biss Market. Biss I literally market. go shopping down here yeah. for There's still more in the back. Yeah, I'm gonna have to uh, sneak in sometime, I know. You know. What if you make your whole basement to a, like an a H Mart? We should have all all of our family members shop from us and we'll charge them a premium. Yes, a premium. Like, like double the regular rate. price? <laughs> Not double, just like 50% more. 50% more. 50% more. more. Yeah. Except me though. Exactly. Yeah, you're 80% more. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know about these. I've never had Taki flavored anything. I don't like that. So, okay, oh, today, by the way, is one of those moments where I'm gonna be talking about a lot of things that I saw on the internet that yeah. I didn't wanna see. I didn't consent to see it. I wish I never saw it. I wish I could scrub my eyeballs with bleach, but you know what? Sometimes you read a little bit too much. You go on a couple too many Reddit threads, and now you know this knowledge. You know this information that's disgusting and repulsive, and what am I gonna do? Am I gonna sit there and die alone? No, I'm gonna share all of it with you. Yes. So it's gonna be really gross. <laughs> Story time. And while we wait for these to cook, I've already told you guys about my 2022 goals and um, I've pretty much given up on practically almost all of them. I think there's really only a few that I've kept on track with even in March, which is the longest it's ever been. Like usually two weeks into January, I'm done. What New Year's resolution? I'm just planning for the next year, right? I'm like, oh, okay, next year New Year's resolutions. But this time, I actually am accomplishing some stuff. And one of mine that I haven't even let slip once is the fact that I've been listening to two to three audiobooks a week. I'm freaking obsessed. If you guys are on the same page as me, if you're on that journey of soul searching, or maybe you're literally just looking for inspiration, maybe, maybe straight up you're just trying to listen to some great bomb mystery thrillers, just mm -hmm. fiction, sometimes some romantic fiction. Or maybe you want to listen to my true crime podcast, Rotten Mango. You need to be on Audible, okay? I really don't think that I would hit this target of consuming that many audiobooks without Audible. They make it so easy for me to listen anytime anywhere, whether I'm traveling, whether I'm walking on the treadmill, like working out, doing chores, I just hop on my Audible app and as a member, I get to choose from one title a month to keep from their entire catalog. So this one title could be the latest bestseller. It could be the newest releases. It could be celebrity memoirs. It could be the hottest mysteries on the market, thrillers, motivation, wellness, business. And on top of that, you get full access to their growing selection of included audiobooks, Audible originals, and podcasts. And Audible has new exclusive series coming out all the time. So I feel like it's just like my go-to place for any sort of spoken word entertainment. Right now, I'm hooked on an audiobook called The Night Film by Marissa Pessel. So essentially, it's about a 24-year-old girl by the name of Ashley who's found dead. And at first, everyone thinks, of course, well, she took her own life. But then the investigator, his name is Scott, he tries to figure out what's going on. Now guess what? Ashley's dad is the legendary cult horror film director. Now, hmm. what's fascinating about this director is that he himself is a mystery which makes his movies even more mysterious. He hasn't been seen in three decades, like out in public. And the the audiobook takes you through some of his like horror movies. It's almost like watching a movie in your brain, like multiple different movies. Do you listen to it while you're sleeping? Sometimes I fall asleep really? to it, yes. I, I also love the fact that I can be listening on my phone inside the house and then hop into my car and then it's just so easy. I pick up where I live off. And if you're new to Audible, they are offering new members to try Audible for free for 30 days. All you have to do is visit audible.com slash Stephanie Sue or text Stephanie Sue to 500 500 and you can try Audible for free, which is amazing. So go listen to the night film. Your mind is gonna explode. There's so many twists. And thank you, Audible, for sponsoring today's video. You think the ramen's done? One more minute. Okay, so do we try the other? No, we don't try the other stuff. Do we go to the market? Yes. Okay. It says okay, it's open. It market. says it's open. Okay, what are you gonna grab? I'm gonna get this. Oh, just take it from the front. Which Yo, one? when I was a dude, when I was a kid. Wow, that was this your is favorite? it. This is so hard to get, bro. Uh, give me get, give me a wong wong milk tea. <laughs> you want a wong wong milk yes, tea? Yes, sir. Hey, it kind of looks like a. Look at this. <laughs> that's that's our childhood. This is called a wong wong. Wong wong. And what do you want? Wait, did it? What do you want? There's so many. There's too many options. 
options. So many, there's not really not that many options, there's guys. There's so many <laughs> options. True, true. There's like four. Can you give me a pink jelly sea? Oh, I knew it. I freaking love jelly sea. love these stuff. What is this? Strawberry? So you gotta shake it up like this. Oh, really? You gotta squeeze it. I don't know if you're supposed, you're supposed to do this. You're supposed to squeeze that. Oh. Is it good? I love jelly. Wow. It's so timmy stuff. So, it's so fun in the mouth, no? How's the wah-wah? What? <laughs> How's the wah-wah? Wah-wah makes me go wah-wah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right. This is so dangerous to be opening Prudak sauce with my oh mouth. My God, I'm sweating already. <sighs> Bro. That's deadly right there. Oh gosh, okay, ready? And I'm using my chopsticks! <laughs> oh my god, look how red it is that already. That so good. Oof, Let me I'm try. so excited. No, you made a mistake! Bro, why did I do that? All right, let's do the corn dog. Oh yeah, okay, we gotta do the blue, blue because blue. we've never done the blue before. All I'm right. just gonna go in, ready? Wait, wait, hold on. Wait, 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 wait. wait. Wait, okay, ready? Mm. Oh wow. Mm. This is Taki, right? Wait, it's mm -hmm. Takis. Mm. But it's not spicy. It's not yeah, it's like it's mm. Takis corn dog. It's I, delicious actually. It's good, it's good. Warm. Wow. Okay. But I think I think I'll still like the red one better. You think so? I gotta try the red one right now. Bro, hot Cheetos is my favorite. Okay, this is a big one. Wow. Mm -hmm. Watch this, watch this. Oh my god, it's so good. I don't even know which one I like more. <laughs> Bro, your cheese pulls? Here. Wackos. Ready? Show me, show me. Wow. Mm. wow. Which one do you like more? Dude, the red is good. <laughs> <laughs> Hot Cheetos. Mm -hmm. This is a biscuit, by the way. Just a freaking biscuit. Okay, hold on. Let's check it. Let me crack it open for you. Straight biscuit. Are you kidding me? That's just straight weird, bro. <laughs> <laughs> no, I've never seen someone cover with biscuit with biscuit. Mm -hmm. I just weird. Yeah, it's weird. Oh, yeah. oh my hmm. guy's going for the two times. Oh, eat some chin Mmm. Mmm. Whoa. That's good. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's good. I have Cheeto dust all over me. <laughs> Let's talk about all of these crazy nonsense. We're talking about a guy. Do you know what a Reddit AMA is? Ask me anything. Yes. It's like sometimes presidents do it. <laughs> president? On yeah, like President Yo. Obama did an AMA, you know? That would be funny. There's a lot of presidents who do AMAs. Essentially, it's like you go on Reddit and you're like, hey, ask me anything. It's like the Instagram version of like, ask me anything. Mm -hmm. And um, the, the results are public. So you get to post them and everybody gets to read them forever. This guy, this is a verified story. So Reddit has moderators who verify these crazy stories and claims because you know, anyone could go on there and be like, I'm a crypto billionaire, ask me anything. But they have to verify it. Mm. So this guy, this is verified, said that he had sexual relations with his own mother all of his teenage years and he did an <laughs> AMA. And it's gonna, what? you're gonna wanna literally scrape your brain out of your skull and wash it clean with some Dawn dish soap and pop it back in there. We're also talking about people who cheated on their uh, loved ones with the surrogate. Okay, oh. so this is posted by a redditor, by the um, the account throw throw a sister 997 So these are all like throwaway accounts. Okay, okay. She said that my husband and I have been struggling with infertility. So she's been mm. having, you know, they've both been having trouble conceiving and they've been trying some options and they were looking into surrogacy and her sister had agreed to it. Oh. So the wife's sister was like, oh, like I will be your surrogate. I'm your sister. This seems like the best mm. option. If you go through an agency, which I don't think it was even, I don't even know if it's legal, right? If you go through an agency, it could cost like hundreds of thousands of dollars or at least tens of thousands. So being your biological sister, I will do it for you. Hey, that's some really strong sister. Oh, that sister wow. bonds. Listen, Respect. I would never do that for my sister. She would never do that for me. That's weird. Yeah. I no, like we would do a lot for each other, but I think this is like weird territory. Like I don't know how you would come back from that. Do you think that's weird? That's weird. Like, so weird imagine though. you, you, you and your wife them. can't get pregnant, so your sister is like, so here, Jen I'll Jen put your like, baby. I got in you, me. Dad, Dad. Oh heck no. <laughs> nah. The fact that I have to, like during family dinner or something. Mm -hmm. 
like my kid is was from her. Mm-hmm. Like that's just that's weird. <laughs> it's weird, right? So, so weird. The sister, let's call her Karen, was like, "Oh, I'll do it." Mm-hmm. But the husband was looking at her. He's like, "Hey, babe, so you guys see, it it takes a lot of time." You know, it takes weeks for you to go through IVF. You have to stab yourself with a needle two times a day just so they can take your eggs out. Who's talking to who? The husband's talking to the wife. Oh, okay. And he's like, it takes so long for them to even take your egg out. And I think something's wrong with your egg, right? And it's going to cost us so much money. I mean, listen, I don't want to bring it up because I think it's weird. But I read, I read some people, a lot of people actually do this. Have you ever thought about the traditional way? What's the traditional And she's way? like, what do you mean the traditional way? So she didn't even respond. She's like, wait a minute. Is he thinking what I'm thinking? He said the traditional way is for him to have sex with his wife's sister and get her pregnant. <laughs> and they would just take the baby. So the wife starts freaking out. So the is wife, that surrogacy or that's just that's not her kid? No, then. it's not her kid. Oh, yeah, exactly. That's it's not her, her kid. niece, but also her kid. It's weird. Yo, Yo, he's tripping. That's weird. But I love the communication. The the, the gaslighting. Yeah, the, the 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 what is the car wheel? The, uh-huh. the car wheel. What is it called? The mental car wheel. The mental car wheel. He did though. Mm-hmm. Mm. They're like, I'm not cheating on you. Mm-mm. I'm like doing the thing traditional way. The traditional you. way. Mm. Family values. <laughs> so he tries to act like what he said was no big deal, and he's like, baby, listen. It's just an easy, quick way for us to have a baby and spare a lot of money and time for use later. Like we could buy the baby more things. We could, you know, get maybe get another baby. So the wife is 100% against it. And now she doesn't even feel comfortable going down this surrogacy route because she can't even imagine what would her sister's reaction. <sighs> okay, no. <laughs> she can't even imagine. Uh-huh. <sighs> Wait, so the sister is not on board, right? I think the sister is on board, right? Mm-mm. No? Oh. oh. Damn. She was only on board for the egg and the sperm to be oh, implanted. Right. Okay. Like more of a regular surrogacy, right? And not like her egg. And it's crazy. Imagine you go to a family gathering. That's your niece, but also your kid. Bro, that's so that's weird. That's weird. That's like me taking... S- no, okay. I don't even... That's, that's weird, right, guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. Try the red. It's good red? right now. Mm. Red is better. The flavor is there. Why did I eat so much noodle? Oh my god. It's like I never That's learn. Good. Oh, I got a really um, angry email once because I said I have like the memory of a goldfish and someone told me that goldfish actually have really long memory and it's a myth. What? And I need to stop what? saying that. Yeah, they have goldfish. Goldfish have long memories. Goldfish? Mm-hmm. No, they don't. Mm-hmm. Goldfish. Really? Mm-hmm. But I don't know why. I keep dying every time I have this, but then I forget the next day and I'm like, I want some nuclear noodles. So she explains, you know, I don't even know what my sister would think if I told her my husband wants to fork her and impregnate her. Her husband's great idea. I mean, it's devastating. The fact that he would even entertain the idea of having sex with the wife's sister just because he wants it the easy way. Like if she ever agreed to something like this, she'll always carry this memory of how the baby is born. Let Let alone the fact that technically it's It's not not even her her kid. It's her niece. It's her sister and her husband's kid. So she shuts down the idea and her husband is now gaslighting her. Mm. And he's telling her, well, you don't just, you just don't trust me. You are selfish for choosing to back out when all I want to do is to be a dad. You knew that I wanted to be a dad since we got married. Basically blaming her for their infertility issues. She said that she felt so devastated. She felt like her body was useless and that it has failed her. Emotionally and mentally, she can't even express how she feels right now. By the way, she mentions the sister is four years younger than her. So she's 34, her younger sister's 30, and her husband is 37. Damn. Now, do you guys think that this is enough reason to break up? Even though she didn't even ask that. I will say, absolutely. If you are saving money now, but the amount of money that you're going to need for therapy, and then the divorce (laughs) is going to be expensive, and then more so than that, a Redditor pointed out, Mm -hmm. if you want to do it the traditional way, wouldn't you think the first option is to, I don't know, do it into this, and then her sister can (coughs) boop it in there and see if that works? That is true. (laughs) They called it the money-hungry groupie style. Money-hungry groupie style. Money-hungry groupie style. Groupie. Groupie. 
It's like a, it's like a, like a groupie of like they hang out around like you know musicians, mm. rappers, artists. Oh. They're groupies, which apparently happens. Just to preface, I don't know if this story is true, but it w- it went viral on TikTok recently. A news outlet came out, or like a drama outlet on Instagram came out, and if this is true, it would be out of this freaking world. But there's a rumor that Drake the rapper is Drake. getting sued. Why? For what you ask? Yeah. Why? Well, apparently, it all started when he started talking to this girl on Instagram. They're hitting it off, and he's like, hey, you and me at my hotel, <laughs> doo doo. And she's like, yeah, call me, right? So they meet at the hotel, they go clubbing, they hang out, they party, they come back to Drake's hotel room, and they do the nasty. Mm. Now, Drake is wearing um, protection. And then once they're done, he goes to the bathroom to <coughs> clean up, and he ties up the protection. Mm. <laughs> Little juice bag. <laughs> so, well, shut up, Bob. And he throws it into the bathroom trash can. So then, okay, it's not that serious. So then the girl decides, I'm gonna go in there. I'm gonna get the shallow bow. I'm gonna untie it, and I'm a boop, and I'm gonna get pregnant with hey, Drake's say, baby without his consent. Yeah, they, they say horse sperm is expensive. Have you tried Drake's sperm? Bruh. Expensive. I bet it's worth like expensive. millions. So, so why would he get sued? Oh, 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 oh. it's what so the- crazy. <laughs> So she goes up in there, and she's probably, if this is true, this is the only way I imagine it. She's like laying, giving birth style, and she's like trying to pop it in, right? The the juice. And immediately, she said it was like pouring hot lava straight into her hoo-ha. Nuclear noodle sauce, pour that sauce straight into her hoo-ha. So she starts screaming. Drake allegedly walks into the bathroom, and it was like, oh. I see what you're doing. <laughs> I already knew because I poured a packet of hot sauce Yo! <laughs> to kill the sperm. No way. Let's go. Wait, a hot sauce kills the sperm? I don't know. I don't know. But, I don't know. What? but the man is like ready and prepared. Yes. He Yo, knows. so he he was prepared. He's like double protection. He's Yo, step dumb. ahead. He yeah. was a, he got that Taco Bell hot. <laughs> like, he got so, that Taco Bell Diablo. So, <laughs> so he predicted that the girl would have done that. He probably does it every time. Yeah. Wow. If this is true, right? So she's suing him for bodily harm. So she tried to do the scoopity doop boop and um she got burnt. Wait, but that wouldn't make sense because this is real? It was her own choice. So then this made the rounds, right? And everybody was making memes. <laughs> People were, I mean, they weren't even dogging on Drake because it's pretty, it's pretty hilarious, all right? So then he posted an Instagram uh-huh. and he didn't deny, he didn't confirm, but all he did was he posted pictures and the caption said, you can have your 15 minutes of fame. I'll take the other 23 hours and 45 minutes. So a lot of people thought that it sounded true. Like the story sounded true. Oh, okay. Like the girl's trying to have her 15 minutes of fame. Oh, okay. Uh, okay. And he'll have the other 23, min- 23 hours and 45 minutes. Okay. Yeah. So apparently the scoopity scoops do happen, allegedly, uh. right? Apparently. So why is it that this wife's husband didn't think about the scoopity doop boop? And he was like, I gotta do the f- like, I don't understand. Does he want a more interactive experience? Does he want to be more involved in the experience? Redditors also pointed out that it would be incredibly difficult to get pregnant the first time. I mean, the chances are it's unlikely. Mm-hmm. So are they just going to keep doing it? How do you, how do you even live after that? It's so uncomfortable. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. So she's asking what? She's just like, I feel hurt and I don't even know what to do. And also, how is he just assuming that the infertility is her issue and not his issue? Yeah. Right. Exactly. I mean, this is going to be one of the top five worst ways to save money. Am I right? You're the responsible save one. Save money? Because he, he said it's all about oh. saving money. Oh. Nah, For IVF, nah. right? I think he just... He wants to fork the sister. Yes. Are we all on the same Let page? Let me tell you. We're on the, the same page. Let me tell you what. <laughs> number one way to save money yeah. is not have a child. <laughs> And that's the reason. Yeah. And what? that's the reason. And that's the reason. And that's the reason. And that's, and that's it. the reason. And that's it. <laughs> All right. And that's the reason. <laughs> <laughs> another Redditor had a similar experience, maybe even worse of a problem. Oh, it was posted on another throwaway account. And she said that my husband and I have been together for five years. We wanted kids, but because of my health problems, it just... It was impossible. So we decided to go with surrogacy. And I was talking to my friend, right? Mm -hmm. Let's say my friend's name is um, Emily. And I'm like, Mm -hmm. Emily, I think I'm gonna get a surrogate. We just really want a kid. And Emily said, whoa, 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 whoa. I got you. My sister, Brittany, Mm -hmm. 
can be your surrogate. She, I know she's gonna be up for the job. She would love to help you guys out. And obviously, you know, you guys are gonna pay her, right? Like $40,000, that's what you were saying. So my sister, Brittany, she got it. No, the original wife, let's call her, what can I call her? Ashley. Yeah. Ashley agreed right away. I mean, she knew Brittany. She knew Brittany's family. She was best friends with Emily for the longest time ever. I mean, this seemed like the best way. This seemed yeah. like the healthiest way. So they set everything up. They talked about the payment. They talked about short and long-term plans counseling, doctor's office appointments. They went to a private clinic to get the IVF done and everybody was happy until Brittany got pregnant. Okay, so when Brittany got pregnant, well, while she was trying to get pregnant, she's been taking these uh, pregnancy tests for a really long time. Like every single day she's peeing on a stick trying to see if she's pregnant. So if she gets a positive test, what do you think she would do? She would take a picture and she would send it to who? <clears throat> Uh, oh, um, uh, Ashley. To, yeah. to Ashley, right? Yeah. She has both of the couple's numbers, but she only texted it to Ashley's husband. And so. Ashley was like, okay, that's weird, but whatever. They mm -hmm. move on. Then they decide to give Brittany access to a credit card so that she could buy food and stuff that she needed directly impacting the pregnancy, but she started using it for her own personal things. Mm. She slowly started to push Ashley out of the doctor's appointments. So if Ashley had to go to work on Tuesday at 3 p.m., that's when she would set the doctor's appointment and Brittany would go alone with Ashley's husband. So, I mean, it's weird, right? Yeah. So Ashley starts feeling very weird, very isolated, but she gets it. You know, Brittany's doing them a huge favor. Pregnancy, I'm sure, is psychologically really, di psychologically really difficult. Husband's just going along because, you know, he's a freaking idiot. Anyway, fast forward to when Brittany is seven months pregnant, she comes over to talk to the couple, but she brings her mom. Uh. And she's got this freaking list, a long list of demands. So these are things that she had already agreed on. She said, oh, once the baby comes out, I'm only going to be involved for like the first two weeks and then I'm not going to be involved in the child's life. And the child is not going to know for this long. Like all of these little itty bitty details had been ironed out. And she said she changed her mind about all of it. She said that she now wanted a say in what they named the kid. She wanted access oh to more credit cards and she wanted free time with the husband so that he could help her out around her house. And also more time with the baby. Like she wanted almost partial custody of the baby, but the baby's not even hers. Like she's a surrogate. This isn't even her egg. This is Ashley's egg. And she said that she only wanted the husband to be in the delivery room with her. So Ashley gets up and is like, yeah, no, I don't agree with any of this shit. You need to stop acting like this is your husband and stop acting like this is your baby because they aren't. And Brittany's mom starts going off on the couple. She's like, don't talk to my daughter like that. You guys are so mean to Brittany. When she is doing the most selfless thing ever, she's making you guys a family. She gave up part of her life for this, and now you guys are so ungrateful. Which, by the way, the couple are paying for this, you know? Brittany or Emily? Br uh, Brittany. Emily's the best friend. Brittany's oh, okay. the sister. No, they don't have a legal contract because Jessica's friend, or because Ashley's friend, Emily, was like, oh, you don't need it. Like, we're all, you know, we've been best friends. This is my sister. So, this, I mean, this is crazy. This is making things so complicated. So mm -hmm. what the hell does she do now? Now, what do you think happened here? You think that she got pregnant and she just like fell in love with this baby. What do you think happened? You're- t But you killed the noodles. <laughs> <laughs> I went in there, nothing. I think- Yes. Brittany and um, the guy- Yeah. Ashley's yeah, husband actually forked. That's what a lot of people think. That and they forked and Emily knew. No, I don't. I, oh, she knew. Oh. So Emily, the best friend, knew and then set it up. Set what up? This whole thing. Set up her sister and the husband. Uh -huh. or, or set up the, Brittany. let me, let my sister be the surrogate. Mm -hmm. Who asked the question? The wife? Mm-hmm. But she's reading all of these, right? Oh, she's reading all of this. Oh, that's rough. <laughs> a lot of people say it sounds like a setup. <laughs> because, listen. Uh-huh. If my best friend wanted a surrogate, I don't think there would be in any world where I would offer up my sister. <laughs> I'd be like, you know what? That's crazy. Um, Dante? <laughs> <laughs> He's a great candidate. I'm, I'm He's running. ripe. He's almost like a wagyu. You know what I mean? <laughs> a wagyu. Look at he this got one. Great bowel movements. Yes. <laughs> Top Great one. probiotics in his gut. I can handle it. Yeah, yeah, he can handle it. Right, so I just don't think that I would offer up my sister. I mean, I would offer up support and anything else that she might need, but I don't think I'd be like, you know what? My sister got you. So people are saying this is odd that she offer 
her sister. Yeah. Then it's planned. It yeah. has to be. Like, there's got to be some sort of mm -hmm. interest. So it seemed like maybe Brittany thought that uh, Ashley's husband would change his mind and would leave the wife. And so I think that they were betting on this psychological thing, which I wonder how that happens. Have you thought about it? So let's say you have a wife, mm -hmm. but you have to have a surrogate. What is the psychological aspect of seeing a different woman that's not your wife pregnant with your baby? But, but I didn't I no, do it. No, no. Oh. But it must be confusing, no? I need re all the receipts. Yeah. The I, need receipts. Pro I need proof. Yeah. Proof what? That that's my baby. Yeah. <laughs> no, but what if you have all the proof? I have all the proof. But like, do you feel like you would kind of start liking this woman more? Do no. Do you feel like you'd want to take care of her? Do you feel like you'd want to massage her feet? Cause Man, why would you do that like, though? Your wife's... But well, the other woman there. has your baby in there. But it's not her egg. It's my wife's egg. Exactly. So. But she's taking care of it. For how long? Nine months. Yeah. Until the baby pops out mm -hmm. of her body. And she's That's so fine. fragile. She's so fragile. Well, I'm sorry. I mean... <laughs> <laughs> Go back to your construction job, go. <laughs> <laughs> he said, you ain't that fragile. No. Yeah, I wonder what's the psychology of that. I mean, a lot of Redditors assumed that Brittany thought that the husband would leave Ashley seeing Brittany knocked up with his child, even though it's not her egg. And potentially, potentially, right? What if she's using him as some sort of weird way to get money? I mean, they don't have a legal contract. Mm -hmm. So is there any way to try to be in this child's life and get child support? It, it's a good thing also was pointed out that it seems like the husband is getting swayed. I mean, he wasn't really standing up for his wife, right? Mm -hmm. It seems like he's either slightly falling for Britney or being a yeah. passive, passive mother forker. Passive aggressive. Not even aggressive, just passive little bitch who won't stand up for yeah, his wife. Just passive, passive. Or he's in on this. Pee pee. Pee pee. <laughs> he's a little pee pee. <laughs> he's pee pee. <laughs> he's pee pee. But he won't stand up for his wife. Even when she put her, put her foot down and she started screaming and she was like, oh no, I'm not going to go with these new list of demands. He told her to calm down and sit down. <laughs> oh. Never tell your woman. Bruh. To calm down. Bro. Well, then, then why are you speaking uh, with so much? Have you, Did you been yelled at something? Or something? Or? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 When's the last time you told me to calm down? Calm down? Yeah. Like, like centuries like, ago, right? Like, like this is before I had my left eye. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, uh, he doesn't have a left eye. <laughs> he told her to calm down and sit down. <laughs> two, two. This guy is. He's on to something, right? Mm. Like, the whole thing is weird. I don't even know how it's gonna go down. Did you know something like this actually did happen in Canada? A couple hired a surrogate to have their baby, but after the baby was conceived, the husband, let's call him Mike, had an affair with the surrogate named Kelly. So she was like a random stranger, a surrogate, yeah. but then he started uh, doing it with her. Uh, I mean, really disgusting, no? She yeah. would be compensated, and the husband pulled her aside and told her, like, hey, if we do it the natural way, <laughs> and it's your egg, and my wife doesn't know, I will leave my wife and marry you. Oh. And I'll raise the baby with you. So fast forward to four years later, she has the baby, which, by the way, was her own egg, they tried to use the wife's egg, but it didn't take, so Kelly just used her own egg. And the husband and wife have a child, and she's being denied visitation. So Kelly, the surrogate, that's her child, yeah. literally, biologically, but now she can't see the child, so she's taking us to court. The husband denies all of this. He said, I mean, yes, we did have an affair, but it was only after the child was already conceived, yeah. and we signed a surrogacy contract, and it doesn't matter if that's Kelly's egg, we are the full responsible parent of this child. And I guess his wife is standing by him. There's quite a lot of these pee-pee dudes out there. Yeah, pee-pee dudes. <laughs> now, Man. Kelly denies signing the, signing the surrogate thing. She says that this was a faked signature. She said that even after giving birth, it seemed like everything was going to be okay. The couple kept telling her, like, oh, yeah, it's going to be good. The husband was like, yeah, I'm going to leave my wife for you in a little bit. What? But then eventually it said that Kelly started demanding more. She wanted an extra $100,000 in addition to her $40,000 payment. But then Kelly said, no, 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 you didn't pay me $40,000. That wasn't a gift from the husband for having an affair. 
So she filed a lawsuit in 2020. <laughs> and the judge literally was like, you guys are a fucking mess. <laughs> the judge was like, you all are a mess. I hate you all. Uh, yeah. And then? She's like, and I'm out. Who won? Who won? So um, the couple won. The couple won? Yeah. The, the affair? Yeah, so the, it said that the couple are the most, um, the only parents that the child has known for the past couple years. And on top of that, the judge doesn't think that Kelly is going to be able to have any visitation without telling or showing the child something is going on. Um, it wouldn't be, like the child would be confused, like, um, why do you want me to call you mom? I have mm-hmm. a mom. Well, how could you even prove that? Mm-hmm. So you know? they're, tr- they're thinking for the child. Mm-hmm. All right. Now that we're done with these surrogate stories that I've been traumatized by, listen, I don't know why I went down a surrogate hole. I think the psychology is so fascinating. Let's say you have a surrogate and your husband is massaging her feet because she's pregnant. How are you supposed to feel like that? Are you supposed to step in and be like, I'll massage your feet? Are you supposed to let it happen? Or are you supposed to be like, that's weird. Please don't massage your feet. Like when my sister was pregnant. Andrew did a lot, yeah. Andrew was pretty crazy. But I was crazier. Literally, I still do this every Uh time my sister walks down the stairs. As if, as if she trips, my little arm is going to stop like, her <laughs> eight month pregnant belly from falling down the stairs at the time. In my head, it was a foolproof plan. So anyways, what would happen? <laughs> it's gonna, getting interesting. I'm so sorry. What would happen? Yeah. If you found out your uncle, your dad, or somebody like a male adult figure in your life mm-hmm. slept with your ex-girlfriend. Ex girlfriend. Mm-hmm. So, so what's the reason I broke up with my ex girlfriend? Then is it because of the? It uncle? don't matter. You just broke up mm-hmm. with them. With my ex girlfriend. Yeah. Then I don't. Re- actually, that your is. uncle's you like care? six. Wait, your uncle is my wait. dad. Okay, I was gonna say. <laughs> your uncle is my dad. Hear me out. Hear me out. Hear me out. Hear me out. My dad. So. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but listen, listen. I, I wouldn't yeah. mind <laughs> if it was my ex girlfriend, like, cause it's the past. But then when you bring your uncle into it, I mean, my uncle, your dad, mm-hmm. then that's just weird because if I see him, it's just like, mm-hmm. why'd you do that? Right? Imagine your dad slept with your ex-girlfriend. Bruh. Yo! Please. Bruh. Please. Bruh. Please. <laughs> Let's call this woman on Reddit, Eleanor. So Eleanor was 38 years old and her daughter was 18. Mm-hmm. So she had, a, she had a kid when she was pretty young, right? So her 18-year-old daughter starts dating this older guy named Harry. She hated Harry. She's like, as a mother, I don't approve of this relationship. He's five years older than you. I just, I don't think that's going to work. So now at the time, Eleanor was really struggling with her life. She was drinking. She was dabbling in drugs. She just wasn't a good mother. She wasn't a good person. She could admit to it. I mean, she said she wasn't abusive to her kids, but she was definitely neglectful, which is abusive, right? But she was neglectful. She cared way more about drinking and partying than her daughter and her daughter's safety. So her daughter starts dating Harry, and she doesn't think it's a good relationship. It felt like Harry was always flirting with her. Harry just was always flirting with her. He likes to drink. He just wasn't a good person. And eventually, the two break up. So she's through the moon. She's like, yes, my daughter broke up with that asshole Harry. Her daughter ends up moving out, out of state. But Harry Mm. would randomly call the house knowing that the daughter is gone and be like, hey, what you doing, Eleanor? What you doing? And he would call and every time she'd say, this is weird, stop calling. My, you know, my daughter is gone, go call her. But then one time he was like, I got a bunch of cocaine. You want to snort it off my (laughs) Wait, what? I don't know if he said that, (laughs) but he was like, I got a bunch of cocaine. Yo! You want to snort it off my abs? Like something like that, right? Uh So then he comes over, they start snorting the cocaine, and they end up doing it Mm. in this drug filled night. Horrible, right? Did she stop? No. So for the next few months, they keep doing it over and over and over and over again. Then one month, Eleanor's freaking out because she's like, menopause? Already? No! She was pregnant! Oh. Uh-oh. So she starts freaking out. She knew it was Harry. She's like, okay, okay, fuck, fuck, fuck. I can't have the kid. So she ends up terminating her pregnancy, but she didn't tell anyone. She didn't even tell Harry. And after that, she just stopped seeing him. It was just too weird. Like, there's no going back to that. It got way too strange. So she starts getting her life back together. She got sober. And then fast forward to three years later, her daughter calls her and says, Mom, I got exciting news. I'm back together with Harry. We're gonna get married. What the wow. heck? That's weird. I can't wait to start fresh. 
Eleanor's freaking out. She thought that Harry was gonna tell her daughter and then she would lose her daughter forever, right? But um, he didn't. And the two of them got married. They're still married for the past 16 years. They have a kid together. And whenever Eleanor sees them, since they live on the other side of the country, it's not all the time, but when she does, she said there's tension between her and Harry. I mean, I bet. But not no, sexual you're... tension. Oh. Tension of like, what the f did we do? Oh God, what's wrong with us? Tension. Eleanor always thinks about it, especially when she sees her grandson, and she thinks, this is so f***ed up, she thinks, God, that could have been my son! <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait but, they, but they both realized it was a mistake, you know? Oh, well, then I think, somewhat, yeah, it's understandable. So, imagine your wife forked your dad before she married you and didn't tell you. Hell no, I'm breaking up! Yeah! But you don't Asa. know. What? Unless Nobody I tells you. I mean, unless I never know. If yeah. I find out though, it's over. Yeah, no, obviously. Not a single chance. And wow. I, I'll cut my dad too. I mean, uncle, whoever. <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> he said, I'll cut your dad off right the fuck now. <laughs> That's what happened. She slept with him. And here's the crazy thing. Remember how she was mad that Harry was five years older than her daughter? And that's why she didn't like the relationship? Well, she was 14 years older than him. So I guess really the rules don't apply to you, Eleanor. I mean, it's very selfish. Don't you think that one of them should tell the daughter? Because, yes, yeah, she's happy, but she's living a fake life. She's living lies. I don't know. At this point, you think they should? Okay, After 16 Beth, years, I might as well years? just let her be happy. Yeah. You know? Like, there are some things that they should just die with. Oh, so? though, should we... In Interrogate. Exactly what? Uh, like, like... You're dead. <laughs> <laughs> okay? No, but you don't agree? I mean, I feel like I'd want to know. No, you, you wouldn't don't. want to know. That's crazy. You wouldn't want to but know. But what if you're so happy? Nobody, nobody benefits from this. Sometimes less talking is better. Okay, but imagine before they got married. Don't you think someone should have told her? Oh yeah, for sure, but... Or even yeah. before they had a kid. It's too late now. Yeah. This is crazy, I can't believe. I mean, I agree with you guys when you think about it like that. Like, if she's so happy, yeah. I guess what she doesn't know won't kill her. Yeah. But I do think that they need to go on, like, the Mari show or something. You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> they need to have a drama channel. <laughs> Just like them three. <laughs> wow. Okay, speaking of seeing sh** on Reddit that you don't want to see, let's talk about the AMA. What was they doing one more time? Ask the guy who was having sex with his mom. Oh, for how long? Oh boy, oh boy. Since he was 15, 14 till his college. With his own mom? His mom. What? Okay, so people has asked him a lot. And I always thought that these are so fascinating because, you know, typically when we talk about relationships like this, do we talk about relationships like yeah, that? Yeah, we never really talk about relationships like this. I mean, sometimes we do, I guess, ancestral relationships. There's usually charges that are pressed yeah. in like a full story. And I do yeah. think that this guy is a victim, but it's fascinating how he was answering the questions. I just want to preface this with saying, this guy's a freaking victim, okay? Yeah. So anyways, people started asking him all the questions that you really should not be asking, mm -hmm. but you kind of want to know, you know what I mean? Do you know, do you know those questions yeah, where you're yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. ooh. So he said, that the relationship started when he was injured. So he's 14 years old and he had an injury. So for a few weeks, he was just completely immobile. Like he couldn't move at all. So he went from masturbating two times a day to zero times a day. So he was 14. I guess he was um, doing a lot in his room with uh, some socks. Okay. So he went from two times a day to zero. So of course, you know, it's gonna show in his personality. He's starting to get irritable, angry, pent up, frustrated. I mean, it was clear exactly something was wrong well, and what was happening. <laughs> you know, Wait, is that know. what happened? He injured his hands? I don't know, he said it was Wait, he injured his hands. <laughs> <laughs> what did he injure? So his parents aren't dumb and they caught on. And one day, both of his parents sit down in his room and his mom in front of the dad says, do you need help with that? No. And his dad is there, by the way. No. And he was okay with all of this. So the mom is like, I get it. You're frustrated. What? Do you want some help masturbating? So he's like, oh my God, what? I mean, I guess. <sighs> he didn't really know what she meant by that. Oh. He didn't know if she was going to go out and get a self-moving sock. Like a pocket, you know what I mean? Like one of those. What, what is 
Okay, first of all, why even say yes if you don't know what you're saying yes to? But I, I don't know. He's 14. He said yes. And he said that he felt excited and confused. And she said, okay, later tonight before bed, I'll help you. So he said that he was anticipating for every single second up until that bedtime, which is disgusting. And then it finally it happened. And even when he was recovered, it kept happening. So even though his hands were good, it kept happening. So it started like that. But then she would start giving him fellation. And then eventually, he said that they full on were doing it. He said it was a very slow progression. They didn't full on do it until he was like 17, which is still not okay. Disgusting, jail, Dang. she needs jail. And she, he said that there was never any cuddling or kissing because that was just weird. <laughs> so, so kissing's weird, <laughs> but, but this is not weird. Yeah, he said kissing your mom is weird. If you ever kiss your mom on the lips, you're disgusting. Yeah. But anyways, I gotta go fuck my mom. I'm like, what? Very aggressive. So, um, crazy. He all, he was also asked if his dad was ever there, and he said that dad would see them together. Or sometimes he would be downstairs, and the two of them would go up and do it. But he never watched, per se. And That's then the so questions weird, were brutal. They asked him if, when they did it, if he ever called her mom. And he said, so bluntly, yes, on occasion, when I was, you know, at the climax, I would call out mom. Because that's what I call her, mom. Bro. Sometimes they would do it multiple times a day, definitely multiple times a week. And he said at first his mom talked to him in a very clinical way about everything that she was doing as if she was teaching him what to do it is weird. But then later, he talked to his mom about it after they stopped doing it. Yeah, they had a conversation about this. And she told him that it helped her relationship with her husband. AKA his dad. How? That after she did the nasty with him, she would go to her husband and do the nasty with him. Ah. Wait, wait, see. Uh, yeah. The husband will do. So the mom would have sex with the son, and then afterwards, she, she would go have sex with the husband, which is his dad. That's so weird, dude. Bro, bro, it's so weird. Like, he's definitely a victim, but. I'm really freaked out by this questioning, okay? Aside from that, he said that they had a very remarkably normal mother-son relationship. He said that he felt well-adjusted, he was a normal person, he doesn't even see this experience as negative. And he How also- How old is he now? He's, he's adult, he's like married. He said that uh, he doesn't even watch- Is that gonna get me demonetized? He doesn't yeah. even watch invest porn. <laughs> <laughs> He says it's not like a kink or anything. And then people asked a pressing question, would you ever do it again? Since they stopped after he went to college and he said, you know, cause they asked, would you ever do it for old time's sake? And he said, no, I don't think that either of us are interested anymore. I feel like it was great memories. Like that's about it. It's sort of like being good friends <laughs> with an ex-girlfriend. No. Even though there was passion before, it kind of fades away and you don't think about doing it again. They asked if his mom was one of the best he's ever had. And he said, good question. No. It's right up there probably because I was young. I was excited for anything. Also, because the nature of the relationship multiplied by a thousand, I felt safe and nurtured and secure and loving. And my mom is very talented. Ah, yeah, that's so disgusting. Bruh. Bruh. And for research purposes, someone asked him on the AMA, do you ever smile when someone calls you a mother? <laughs> <laughs> he did not respond. Yeah, yo, yo, he should change his Reddit name. <laughs> yes, mother. Nine seven zero nine two. Mother nine seven zero one two. Be it. Yeah, never heard a story like at that ever. And he was just answering these as if, who doesn't do this? Is this not so alarming? Do you think that he has an Oedipus complex? The philosopher Freud believes in an Oedipus complex. There's some Greek mythology behind it. We're not gonna get into it, right? It's this whole story about a guy named Oedipus. Essentially, his dad was a king, had the son, and then he went to the freaking temple of Apollo mm. or some shit like that. And the people, why are you looking at me like that? And the people were like, oh, your son is gonna be the reason that you die. So he was like, oh my god, get rid of my son, right? So then he gets rid of his son and he sends him off to be killed, but nobody kills the son. The son becomes adopted by a neighboring kingdom and he becomes the next heir to that throne. So he ends up coming back, long story short, his dad dies, he kills his dad, and he marries his mom not knowing that's his mom. Oh. So the Oedipus complex is 
a little bit different, which is fascinating that it's named the Oedipus Complex because um, Oedipus actually stabbed his eyeballs after he found out that was his mom. But then Freud was like, Oedipus. That means every boy at some developmental stage in their life wants to fuck their mom. <laughs> no, bro. What? So he's no. saying it's not necessarily fuck their mom, but it's like, um, no. like you know when kids... When you see those TikToks and they, they get jealous of maybe their mom kissing their dad. Do you know what I'm talking about? No. Do you, no. You've seen them though before. I've never I've seen, seen them. Like on TikTok, there's like kids who will literally squish in between mom and dad. Or like kids that'll be like, I'm going to marry dad. You know, mommy, you can't be there. What? So nah. it, apparently it's a developmental phase and Freud is saying it's not sexual and it's not weird. It's just a moment where you go through and you kind of, um... <laughs> yeah, what I'm mean, your than, mom. <laughs> more than jealous, I think it would be like more like, oh, I'm happy for them. Yeah, but apparently when you're young, like this is when you're like yeah. young, young, like a couple years old. I don't know. I never got jealous. Listen, that's what Freud said. That's weird. That everybody goes through a phase with the, you want to your mom there's other philosophers who have very different ideas that i believe in a little bit more as in like the um oh there's the idea that let's say you they did a study on like arranged marriages and it happened in a lot of different cultures where you would essentially be adopted by the future husband's family at a young age so you would start living with them since you're like three instead of you know getting married at that age oh yeah Tony but it, the, oh, yeah. the um the chances of you staying married and being happily in love are a lot lower so a philosopher came forward like a psychologist came forward and he believes that you have this natural biological defense mechanism against incest and the way that it works is anyone that you grew up with and you almost felt like a sibling growing up you are instantly not attracted to them. Mm -hmm. Just instantly, you're like, disgusting. Mm -hmm. But there are also people who grew up together. Like, since I mean, there's some five. people. But I think that's like not in the same house. It's like maybe on okay. the same street. Like you're okay. a friend, you know. All but right. like in the same house, like you're progressing mm -hmm. as a family unit. Yeah. And you see all of their like, you know. Yeah, everything. Yeah, that's weird. So there was another study done that said that, see, I don't know if this is true. This one seems a little bit harder to believe for me, is that every single person has their own pheromones, like their own scent, very unique scent. And as humans, you might not think that you're very attuned to other people's scents, but apparently you don't like scents that are very similar to your own. They said, biologically speaking, a lot of people have similar scents to your own if you're related to them. Mm. I don't know about that. I don't yeah. think so. Yeah, yeah. I don't know about that one. But you want no, to know seriously. something really disgusting and you guys are both going to gag and I'm going to giggle. I'm going <laughs> to giggle gaggle. So when they showed women pictures of um, men that looked like their family members. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. We're showing women men that looks like their Like family. their dad. Okay. Or their brother. Okay. Uh -huh. Okay. Women were less attracted to them. Uh huh. When they showed men pictures of women who looked very similar to their sisters or their mothers, men were more attracted to them than not. That's what? cat. Disgusting motherfuckers. No, no, I don't know. That's cat. But no, they say that you are more attracted to people who looks like you. Because you see, you see yourself in the mirror all day long. So when you see another face that's similar to your face that looks like you, you're more you're more used to it. I don't think so. It's true. No, that not that for me. No, that's true. No. What do you mean not for you? I, Have you uh, met someone who looks just like you? No. <laughs> your sister. <laughs> your sister. <laughs> 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 attractiveness for guys decreased so. for girls stay safe mother <laughs> I'm sorry. Dude. i love you guys hope you guys enjoyed today's video make sure to check out audible linked in the description because you do need to cleanse your brain of all of this nasty oh nasty. for sure for sure that's the place to do it go to audible.com stephanie sue or text stephanie sue to 500 500 bye